when planting a new native woodland, it's good to plant it in such a way as to get the maximum amount of wildlife. And you can do this by having um, as many species as possible, um, but also by having a tier system in the woodland where you have um, natural different layers of under canopy. Um, so you've got the, the big tall trees with their um, the big main canopy and then underneath that you've got different layers of foliage and plants. Maximum amount of surface area to um, transpire water out uh, to harbour wildlife. Uh, every different type of native tree brings new types of insects and in turn they'll bring new birds and new mammals and you just have way more uh, life you know, in general. Uh, each new type of tree brings a new type of fungi, um, everything, you know, it's, it's, it's as many types of trees as possible, native trees, is going to enrich your woodland and make your area a sink for wildlife. So it will draw wildlife in from all around. We've got almost every type of native tree there is for here. Um, and um, we have all sorts of things. We have two types of owl coming here, uh, woodpeckers and all sorts of hedgehogs and goodness knows what. No badgers yet, but um, deer. We get two types of deer and all sorts of birds of prey and, and uh, I reckon it's down to how many different species of tree we have. Every time we plant a new woods, we always uh, plant some trees um, to protect the big trees and other trees that will eventually grow under the big trees. Uh, like just here is this oak tree, um, which is uh, was growing over there, it seeded itself sort of over there somewhere and moved it here. And uh, around the oak tree we'll plant like hawthorn trees and things like that which will protect the tree whilst it's growing and which will survive in the under canopy uh, to some extent but they won't survive when the trees get really big. These trees that protect the other trees um, whilst they're growing are just called protector trees. Uh, the best example is hawthorn or blackthorn, little prickly shrubby things that uh, don't really get very big. Um, they're often in the wild, they're the pioneer tree that arrives first and then the oak tree seed underneath them and it's sort of a natural process of progression from the prickly shrubby trees to the main sequence trees. Um, so a few of these planted around the trees um like you have got like uh, here there's an oak tree just there uh, there's a lime tree there um there's uh oh another lime tree here and there's a big beech tree there so those are the trees that are going to be the main big trees in the woods um so then around them i've got some sort of prickle trees that will be there for a few decades but they won't survive in, in, in when it's a mature woodland, only around the edges and in the hedges. Uh, but uh, what I want to focus on today is the trees that will survive under the canopy, the under canopy trees. The first tree I would like to mention today as a really good under canopy tree is the hazel tree. Uh, here's one. Um, I think this one's been in about 10 years, maybe, um, I lose track a bit. Um, they grow loads of branches from the base and they have really dense foliage in the, uh, throughout the growing season and they have nuts and they have really early flowers and they have lots of different habitats for wildlife um, and they grow perfectly well underneath trees. They don't get as big and bushy as they would if they were growing in full sun, but they do um, they do get quite big and relatively bushy, even under quite a dense canopy. So they're a very good tree and I'd strongly recommend them and they produce edible nuts. 
Here there's loads of more hazel trees. Um, great big branches growing quite happily underneath other trees. Um, they do really well under birch trees which aren't as much of a thick canopy. Um, here is birch and alder and they do really well under here. The hazel trees will also seed themselves a lot under the trees and when I'm planting new hedges and new woodland um, it's very easy to find little baby ones that I can then transplant to other areas. For example, here is a little baby hazel tree which has seeded itself from last year's nuts, but that's probably a little bit small to transplant yet. I like to leave them until they're a few years old, maybe about three feet, two feet tall ideally, and then they transplant really well and they don't get swamped by all the grasses and things. Here are some ones that are a bit bigger. That one would be ideal if I dug that up this year to plant in a hedge or a new woods. I could just trim it back a little bit, back to some nice big buds, and so it's about two or three feet tall, and that would be perfect for planting in a new woods or a new hedge. And hazels are really good because they act as protector trees as well, because they've got so many branches that they protect the little oak tree or the little beech tree or whatever it is. And then when the woods are grown, it will still quite happily grow underneath the trees. So it's a perfect all-round tree, a hazel tree. The next tree on my list for growing well under trees would have to be the Gelder Rose. Uh, they grow um, really well under trees. They sort of the branches layer into the ground and grow roots and they sort of spread like that. Um, they're a viburnum, so they're related to lots of garden shrubs. They have really quite dramatic um, hydrangea-like flowers um, in the uh, late spring. And then they have uh, really, really rich coloured autumn leaves for quite a long period of time. This one was planted about 11 years ago and it's just quite happily growing underneath this canopy of oak and silver birch trees. The Gelder Rose are always very um, suckering or more that the, the branches root into the ground a bit and you can nearly always find a, a bit that you can pull up and put in a new hedge or a new woodland. Uh, they grow very happily underneath trees here underneath this great big oak tree. The next trees on my under canopy list are gonna be uh, field maple and spindle. I put them together because they, they always seem to grow so well together. Here we are underneath the same oak tree and here we got the spindle tree um, growing really well here, um, and um, oh, here it is, <laughs> and here's a field maple as well growing in with it. Um, almost everywhere where I've put them growing together, they just seem to uh, help each other somehow. So they, they've got like some kind of unknown symbiosis, but they do seem to grow really, really well together. I'm not sure why, but. Um, I always seem to now put them together. Um, so then I'm going to do these two. The spindle, which is Euonymus europa, and um, and uh, the field maple, which is Asa campestris, our only native uh, maple tree. Here are the berries of the spindle, or the berry containers the berries have dropped out of these ones. And these, I think all the berries have gone now, but I know there are some somewhere at other places. But here they are underneath the canopy of the oak tree, really happy here, and then growing with it down there, and where they just about reach it, the field maple there. Here's another example of field maple and uh, spindle growing really well together underneath a uh, canopy of oak. Um, See, even under this thick canopy, there's really thick foliage on this field maple. 
it's really bushy, um, just as if it was growing out in full sun, uh, which they do perfectly well as well. They're brilliant in hedges. Uh, it's got this big branch. Um, this one's been in, I'm not sure how long, uh, maybe eight or nine years, I think. Um, and uh, they seem to grow to a height of about 50, 60 feet. Um, underneath the canopy, and they, they just seem to do quite well like that, that they're quite a tall under canopy tree. Whereas the spindle is a sort of a suckering shrub that gets about, I think about 20 feet tall, and it spreads into clumps underneath the trees. Um, so they're both very good, really. They're both good like, habitat for wildlife, extra layers of leaves, so they're really, really good. Here, here's the spindle trunk here. You can always tell they've got these green sort of square type of trunks. And uh, the field maples are very knobbly and very branchy. The field maple stems are, are really kind of green and they're sort of like, seem to be four-sided. They're quite distinctive. Um, there are many garden varieties of Euonymus which are kind of similar. Uh, they're quite unlike anything else really that we have growing native. Um, and the leaves are sort of like this. Whereas the field maple is sort of quite knobbly, quite light bark. The um, leaves go kind of a butter yellow in the autumn, although occasionally you get one that goes red, but usually they're yellow. And they just grow up underneath the trees, just as if the other trees weren't there. And they make the woods really, really nice and thick to walk through, even when you've got a big canopy, um, which would block out most things. Another tree from my under canopy list has got to be the rowan. Although rowan trees are more associated with being a pioneer tree, being the first tree to stick up themselves out of the gorse um, and you know being out in full sun growing on a stone wall somewhere. But they do grow surprisingly well as under canopy in woodland. Um, this one's growing underneath the same oak tree and it's just pushing up in a little gap between the oak tree and a lime tree. Um, but it uh, produces berries, it's completely underneath the canopy, and it's very happy here. Um, I've noticed that they can do really well, even surviving underneath conifer plantations, although not to the same extent. They sort of grow up a bit, fall over and root, grow up again, and they sort of spread around as a little tiny shrub plant. But even there so, they will grow like that underneath a thick plantation of conifers and where you have the paths or any gap in the conifers these little, these little rowan trees can grow and suddenly become little bushy trees just in any little bit of light that presents itself. The rowan tree otherwise known as mountain ash is a kind of sorbus. Another kind of sorbus is uh, this uh, wild service tree here but um, I'm not sure how well they do as an under canopy. This one is uh, planted on the edge of the woods. So um, we'll be able to see if it grows well this side, I'll be able to see if it grows well as an under canopy tree. And if it grows well that side, then it will grow well on the edge of the woods. So I'll have to see with this one, but it is another kind of sorbus. Holly's native and it does really well, but it can become quite a nuisance. But uh, I guess it does really well in the under canopy, so it has to be on the list. Here are some spindles that haven't lost all of their berries yet. And you can just see the, the orange berries in these bright pink seed pods. This bit of woodland uh, put in, I think, oh, I don't know, seven-ish years ago. Um, it sort of just extended that bit, which was about 11 years ago. And it was add bits each year. It's difficult to remember exactly when each bit was planted. Um, there's an oak tree here, um, and then amongst it, I put lots of these little rowan trees, just a tangle of them. And 
and they're just yeah doing really well together here so far. So um, that's really good. So yeah, they lose their leaves earlier than the other trees. Uh, I think they're more adapted to a more wintry highland aspect. Uh, but they do support a lot of wildlife, and they um, they did they do really well. The next tree from my under canopy list is this one here with its uh, big furry leaves which is silver underneath and it is called the uh, wayfaring tree. It's a type of viburnum and it's related to some of the garden varieties that have these very early clusters of really strongly scented flowers um, sort of in the late winter early spring although the wayfaring tree does seem to throw off flowers at any time of the year um, it's growing with a spindle here and a cherry plum quite happily and yeah this woods this bit of the woods was I think about eight years ago um, that bit was 10 11 years ago uh, and it's the, the trees are getting quite big and they're overshadowing it and it's still growing really well um, and um, it, yes I, I've you know, I've noticed it growing under trees in other places as well, so it's quite happily uh, grows under trees and it's very thick and bushy and creates lots of habitat for wildlife as well. It gets about 15 to 20 feet tall and this one's already 10 feet tall and happily growing with all of these trees. In the summer or early autumn they have these sort of scarlet berries which are very nice and the birds seem to like them. The tree is quite suckering as well. Here's some some suckers that are grown from underground roots. The original tree here, loads of suckers all around it. So if I want new ones, it's very easy. When these leaves have dropped off, I can just, uh, just pull some of these up to put in hedges and new bits of woodland. There are, of course, honeysuckles and dog roses, which grow really well under trees but they're more climbing plants, so I'm not going to put them on this list today. So the last one I'm going to mention today is the dogwood, um, which is a type of cornice. Beautiful leaves, they go kind of red, purple, yellow, there's this one sort of a yellow colour, and they have little, little blackberries, and they're really interesting. They are quite horribly suckering, so I've got them here on a headland where they can't spread too far, but they, uh, they, they are beautiful trees. Um, because the, the purple colour in the autumn on its own is a reason to have them but I've only got them in just this one part of the woods because I am concerned by the horribly suckering aspect of them um, and uh, let's have a look in here they have been suckered so far and how long have they been in? six years, five years, I'm not really sure uh, but about, about five or six years, I think, these ones. Um, and they're doing all right. Uh, I first got them, I forgot they were here, and, and cut them down with the shears, and, uh, and they've recovered really well. And every year they get a bit bigger. Um, and, uh, yeah, they do really, really well under trees. So it's always good to bear the under canopy in mind when planting trees. I think this is seven years old, this bit, but the tiny bit there is 11 years old. Um, here we've got all sorts. I mean, willow does quite well as an under canopy for so long. It's more like a protector tree, a plant that with the bigger trees, it grows up with them, but it doesn't survive when they reach maturity. But uh, it does survive for a long time. Even hawthorns and um, other prickle bushes survive for quite a long time as the uh, canopy grows. Um, but uh, yeah, here field maples do really well here. More field maples. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that gives you some ideas. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you press the little me, which is somewhere down there, you can see all my other videos and I shall see you next time.